In this episode of Open at Microsoft, I'm with Alexander to talk about Fluent UI. You don't want to miss that. Hey, Alexander, how are you? Hey, nice to be there, Frank. So what do you want to talk about Fluent UI today? Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about Fluent today, but uh, let's make a small stop first. Let me clarify what is Fluent UI. There is Fluent okay. Design, which is design system. It contains also other bits like icons and emojis. By the way, uh, these bits are open source and currently on my screen you can see a repository of Fluent emojis. Uh, but a Fluent UI itself is a component library. So Fluent Design System also contains components and Fluent UI implements them. And a reasonable question will be, why do we need this library at all? Why do we need components? Well, because we want to provide a solid foundation for developers. So developers will be focused on building their features, on building their applications and reaching their business goals instead of building components. And by the way, building these primitive components, it sounds that it's easy, but our practice is a bit different because, well, you also need to build solid APIs. You need to ensure that they will scale across products. You need to work with designers, so all these components will look enough similar, and you also need to make them accessible. So they should work properly with high contrast mode, they should provide proper keyboard navigation, and, well, all these things are unfortunately very complicated. Oh, interesting. And uh, what's new in V9? Because uh, the release was just V9, correct? Yes. So recently we released Fluent UI React V9, uh, and we built totally new documentation, which is currently on my screen. It's totally new UI library, which is based on its predecessors, based on learnings, and features new APIs that allow to build applications easier, that based on feedback that we got. And it's not only about improved developer experience, but it's about smaller bundle size and faster performance. So and why it's so why it's more performant then? Well, there is a reason. And first, it's what we tried. We reduced amount of abstractions that we use internally. So we use React more tightly. We work more closely with React. And another thing is our new CSS and JS engine called Griffo that features such things like uh, ahead of time compilation and CSS extraction that allows to reduce runtime part that we have and that browser will evaluate. So we significantly improved JavaScript performance. And by the way, website with Griffo is on my screen. Wonderful. And I remember that you asked me about migration. Yeah, I <laughs> want to know more about migration because what what if I was using a previous version? Is it compatible? Can I upgrade easily? Uh, well, as I said, it's completely new, different APIs. And uh, if you remember what happened with Angular and Angular JS, it's mostly the same thing. But we tried to be better in this direction. We knew that it would be hard, that it's new UI library. And again, new APIs, I keep repeating that, but well, it's important. So uh, what we tried to do, we tried to ensure that previous versions and V9 will be able, we, you will be able to use them side by side in the same application. So migration could be gradual. So you can use components that looks in the same way, that works in the same way, but new components are simply more performant and have better developer experience. And for that, we distribute them through separate NPM packages, and it's how our partners proceed with upgrade. Okay, great. So like this way, you could have, like, like you say, a progression in your migration where you're bit by bit you're changing or component by component you're migrating your application and just improving the performance all along. That's great. I hear you talking about React, Angular, and I know JavaScript, there's many different frameworks. Or how many like how many frameworks do you work with in V9? And like what's what's the plan maybe for the all the, the others? Well, 
uh, it's probably will be disappointing part, but I will try to make it differently. So currently, as I said, it was Fluent UI React V9. So it works only with React. Okay. And we don't want, well, we, we don't plan to support Woo, JS, or Angular or any other framework. Because again, building component library for any other framework, it will be costly. And well, the truth is that all, almost all our partners are using React. Okay. So it's a disappointing part. But there are also great news because currently there is a team that works on Fluent UI web components with three. And version three of web components will uh, implement the same design language. It will implement the same design terms and it will try to close uh, to follow closely React APIs as much as possible. Uh, yeah, it's different platform, so it cannot be one by one, but we will try to follow the same design terms. So in near future, our expectation is that you will be able to use Fluent UI React and web components side by side. Again, how it happened with migration, but uh, when you don't want to use React, you will have an alternative. Well, that's great. That's great. And it's all open source, right? Fluent UI, Fluent UI sorry, is open source. So if people are interested to contribute, like how is it possible? Uh, so, okay. Uh, currently on my screen, you can see our repository. It's where we work. It's fully open sourcing. It's me to license it. Uh, and uh, it also means that we do, we not only just throw code to GitHub, but we also work through GitHub. We track our issues. We use GitHub projects. We create pull requests through there. And we try to do this in an open way. For example, uh, a year ago or a bit more, we started to work on RFCs. And it's a place where you can come, even as third party person, and comment like on our initiative or are we moving in the right direction or if you have different ideas you can come and comment it's an open space and it's related to everything you can also come and contribute and in most cases people uh, think that contributing is about uh, writing code but it's not really true because reporting bugs is also contribution Reporting feature requests is also a contribution, and even fixing typos in our documentation is also a contribution. So you can join our project and contribute in different ways, and all of these contributions are warmly welcomed. Oh, I love that. Very great message here. So we'll make sure to add the link into the description so everybody can join that wonderful Fluent UI community. Alexander, anything else you want to add? Well, uh, there is a bit uh, underrated thing, but I would like also to mention our plans. Uh, we, with Fluent UI React V9, we are trying to develop, well, we are not trying, we develop new components. And on my screen, you can see documentation. There is already an extensive list. But what we are working now and what will be in our near future plans for V9 is bringing feature parity. So we will have more components. Uh, there are some preview components that we will try to move to stable. And in, in, in near future, we will try to bring this feature parity and start to move from previous versions even more actively. Wonderful. So I'll make sure to re-invite you to the show, or maybe you and you can bring in a new guest to talk more about those things. Well. Thank you a lot for coming on the show today. It was really appreciated and looking forward to learn more about Fluent UI. <laughs>